it is Sunday, April 18th. The weatherman says we're gonna get a frost. Can you believe it? Just the other day, it was 80 degrees. Everybody was itching to plant. I know there's a lot of tomatoes and peppers went in the ground, probably a little early, but why cry over spilt milk? Let's look at a couple DIY frost protection plans. First off, you gotta take a look at what you got in the ground, what needs protected. This year, I think everything I've got up is pretty much cold hardy in an eight hour window. That's what my forecast says. I think we're gonna be okay with some of this stuff. Last fall, we saw that the radishes held up really good under the frost. Lettuces always do well. Spinach is a cold weather crop. All the brassicas are cold weather crops. Carrots do well. I think we'll be okay with what we got in here so far, with the exception of our potatoes. Now this is gonna work the same way as if you had tomatoes or peppers or any other of the warmer weather crops. This is gonna be DIY and I'm on the cheap. So first off, you need to see what kind of material you have. Now there's one of our helpers, now that's a worm. Sorry about that guy. Now if you've been following my channel, you know I've used these straw bales. I banked up quite a bit of mulch up around them for the polar vortex that we went through. I think the mass really helped save everything, keep it going through the winter. If you've got any hay bales, that's one really good way to mitigate the frost. I've left this plastic out here just in case we were gonna have something like this. Depending on how much you wanna cover, this is a way to get a lot covered really quickly. If you know it's gonna frost, there's a couple things you wanna take in consideration and I learned that the hard way. Had a great plan, went out to execute it. It was late in the afternoon and it was pouring rain. I got soaked and I learned a couple hard lessons. You want to be preset. It's actually going to warm up pretty good today. Monday it's supposed to be in the mid 70s. If you live west of Tulsa or Bartlesville, looks like it could be cold on Monday. Point is you want to prepare now while it's warm, the wind's not blowing real hard, and you can get preset. Let's take a look at what we might have to work with. You know when your wife says, what are you keeping that old bent piece of metal for? I'll tell you why. It works as a nice little frame. I'll show you how I'm going to lay this in here. I found the larger the area around your plants you can keep covered, the better off your plants are going to be. I also found that you want to keep your cover as far off of your plants as possible. If it's laying right down on top of your plants, it's almost as bad as just being out there in the open air. A couple other things we can look at. This is one of my favorites, is tomato rings. You don't necessarily have to put them in the ground like that. Depending on how tall your plants are, you just set it on the ground and use that as a row cover. Let's go take a look. For the potatoes, we're gonna use tomato rings for the potatoes. They've come up enough, we know where they're at. We also know we did not plant right next to the fence. So you can just set your ring up, one ring on one side. That should take that up high enough. If that doesn't look like it's going to be high enough, where a bucket can come into play. You just want to make sure the top of this is above your plants. Because when you pull that plastic, you want to have a nice little tent. You can use an old blanket if that's all you have. I am going to use plastic. But this is an example of what a sheet or row cover will do. All you need to have is a little support. Keep it right off the top. That covers enough area that the ground will also help keep those plants warm. If you've got coffee cans, coffee cans work the same way. Yes, you can put it straight over a plant or you can use it as a pillar and put between your plants create a tent. Same thing with your buckets. Put it over a single plant and it can also act as a pillar for the rest of the plants or you can put it between the plants and it'll act as a pillar. Same thing with the bigger cardboard boxes. You just set them there and you use that as a pillar but you want to do all this preset now and that way when it comes time to cover them 
you're not out there and it getting dark on you, starting to rain on you, all you'll have to do is pull your blankets or your plastic or your row cover. All right, now if you have a little bigger bunch, that's where a, a hoop like this can come in handy. Now we'll keep that off of there. I'm lucky enough to have these harvest bins, which we put right over these little potatoes that are coming up. Now the one thing you gotta watch for is if it's gonna rain a lot or snow a lot, anywhere that's not supported and will not shed that snow will sink. You don't wanna crush your plants. Then I'm just gonna use a cardboard box to support this next batch. That's just gonna act as a pillar. Take a look at the covering. See, if you're gonna try to wrestle this by yourself in the wind after it started to rain, as it's getting dark, the chances of you su succeeding are very slim. Leave an area, because you're gonna to wanna to put a board down to hold that side down. See, as you run into a snag, you try to do this as it's getting dark and the wind's blowing on you. You're gonna wish you did a little preset. Obviously, it's way too warm to be spreading plastic out right now. Now, you've left this one in where you can get a hold of it. That's where you're going to want to drop your bracing. Now, when you come time, you just unwrap it over the top and you can cover that edge with just a little bit of mulch and hold it in place. I got one more DIY trick for you. If you run out of totes, you run out of buckets, you run out of tomato rings, you run out of coffee cans, you run out of cardboard boxes, if you run out of everything to make a tent over your tender vegetables, I got one more trick. No, we're not covering it with the plastic bag. You only have to have them covered for a couple days, even one day, a few hours. This is a great method. Take any plastic bag that doesn't have a hole in it, just flip it up, fill it up with air, twist it off. You can set it right next to the plants that you want to protect and put a sheet, oh, put one on one side, one on the other, cover it with a sheet. Yes, if you just let this go, it's gonna blow away. But if you bring it in, set it down and put a sheet over it, it works real nice as an insulator. And this has air inside of it, and that also, as it warms, as any sun hits this, will warm this up, it will also help protect your plants. Now it's not gonna hold air very long, and if you set it on a stick, you're probably gonna pop it, but it can get you, it can get you by for a few hours. That's the last resort DIY. You need to run out in your garden while it's warm, take an assessment of what you have to cover, get whatever precautions you need set so that when it comes time, you can just walk out there, cover it up, get to the house, feel secure that your plants are gonna make it through the freeze. Don't be afraid to be creative. Upside down wheelbarrow work in a pinch. I hope this was helpful. And until next time, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and God bless you. Come on, let's plant. Let's go plant garden.